September 23rd, 2021. Guys, a quick update on our sun. It's been relatively quiet for the last few weeks, but we've got a returning sunspot that was active when it was here. Now, it takes it about 27 days or so to rotate around the sun. And it, this one made it, and now it's coming back stronger. Notice now on the 21st in your timestamp at the bottom, two days ago there was the first CME and flare. And this morning, 23rd, check this out. You'll get the last few frames right here. Right there. Again, that sunspot between the 21st and 23rd has gotten closer to being directly Earth-facing. Same satellite. This is Lasco C3 but different cameras, a much wider view. We'll just go through this on the 21st here. And that's a large explosion because the size of the sun is that white circle inside the blue dot. And then on the 23rd coming up here, same sunspot again, closer to being Earth facing. We're also about to go through about three days of very strong solar wind, over 700 miles per hour, or excuse me, 700 kilometers per second, which is one point uh, 566 six million miles per hour. Now here, different satellite, this is uh, the Solar Dynamics Observatory. We get visible images of the sun with different filters. Here's the sunspot that's turning Earth facing. And uh, again, the it was just below an X flare on the uh, X-ray flux chart. We're going to take a look at that, but right there, that's the classic X flare signature. And uh, what it does, it's blinding the camera almost at that point. But you, I'll kind of back it up and slow it down. You can see the the sunspot's large. You've got kind of two active regions together and some active regions right below it. But uh, as it starts to spark here, there was your first one. You saw a small CME to the left. And then the uh, X-flare, guys. Now, this is also Solar Dynamics Observatory. They have 12 cameras there, different filters for different uh, imaging. The sunspot you see rotating at the bottom left is the one that uh, is getting close to being Earth-facing. Now, even though if you were on a level line with the equator of the sun, the Earth is slightly south of that to the um, lower than the equator. And so anything in the bottom section of the sun is more Earth uh, effective or geo effective. Now here is the chart from uh, this uh, solar flare. This is the X-ray flux one minute data, and you notice uh, on the right side here you've got X flare. And it's kind of a hard line to see. I'm going to draw it straight across. If it would have reached that red line, you we would have had an X flare. And the stronger they are, the more powerful the CMEs, the more powerful the radiation and the ionization of the upper atmosphere that interferes with a lot of communications, the stronger that is. And um, it was an X flare that uh, caused the Fukushima earthquake, by the way. Now, we're also about to encounter three days of very high solar wind speed. The chart on the bottom is uh, right there. That's velocity or radial velocity kilometers per second, which translate to solar wind speed, okay? 700 kilometers per second for several days. That's 1.566 million miles per hour. Think about that. Think about it. The way you figure it, if you get your, you got kilometers per second, notice at the bottom, you multiply that speed by 2,237. And that'll give you the miles per hour. And so solar wind has always been measured uh, more or less in kilometers per second simply because it's so fast. But uh, you notice starting today, 23rd, right there. Now notice that for at least three days, we're going to be at very elevated solar wind speeds. Usually, if you're going to have a 700 kilometer per second peak, it's at um, just one section of a solar wind graph. It, not usually three days, but notice on the left side at the bottom of this chart, the Earth is in the green dot, and that correlates to this chart here on the right with the green arrows. So you're going from a little over 300 kilometers per second, doubling that again to 1.56 million miles per hour. And so we, can, we need to watch for earthquakes over this time period. The, it, and again, it's going to be starting today if, there, if this graph is correct. 
and they're actually getting in different uh, measurements from the satellites already so we just have to keep an eye on that but uh, in the three-day period the earth will rotate three times so there the entire globe will be exposed to the to the sun facing side of this solar wind speed the incoming section of it if you're on the back side of the earth the dark side of the earth these um, sometimes are much less effective in that area you'll see the quakes the, the strongest one that I've seen from a solar flare was the Fukushima quake and we were tracking X flares but as Tokyo turned in or that or Japan turned into the uh, sun facing side it was 245 or something in the afternoon daylight if you remember the videos you could see the explosions that afternoon you could see the tsunami but the point is i guess is that we need to keep an eye on the tectonic plates of our planet for the next uh, three days or so and it's going to take more than that for it to get back to normal all the way out to around the 28th if you look at the graph and it's still slightly elevated but these first three days at 700 kilometers per second uh, could be uh, could put a lot of pressure on our planet and the tectonic plates again so we're watching it guys you keep an eye on it and it's a heads up be safe